to just being aggressive out there. How about you? Is it partly that and maybe understanding concepts or the pitching staff or what's contributing? I think a little bit of everything. We talked about giving these guys the freedom. Uh, and I think in that, uh, you're, you're starting to see some guys maybe get an education. Uh, but we look, we do a lot of work ahead of time trying to look at either the pitcher's moves or delivery times or the opportunity and trying to get these guys to understand that it is our, our, our probably one of our biggest tools if we can utilize it. I think early in the season, facing a lot of left-handed pitchers that control the running game, it's just very difficult and it takes that part of our game away. But even before that, I think the importance of us getting on base and being patient and working pitchers is, just kind of goes hand in hand with that. Ian Snell's on the mound today. His start was pushed back a day, and we know kind of the emotional stress that he's had this week. What has your dialogue been with him? Well, again, I, I think we, we sent him home yesterday. He was uh, with the flu, and uh, he's a little bit weak today, but, uh, you know, he wants to be a part of this ball club, and, and, and he says, hey, there's no way I'm going to miss his start, so we're going to give him that opportunity. He's, he's, he's watched the last couple games. Obviously, he, had, he was out of town with a bereavement and, and is going through a lot of things, but I think it's important for him to get out there and be a part of the team and, and try to contribute today. Does he have a goal, a target innings that he's trying to make, or is it the same as normal? It's the same. We were able to get a good bullpen in the other day, and you know, I think you, you look at his first outing, it was outstanding. Second one, uh, for a lot of different reasons, didn't go well. Um, so we're looking to try to get back to that first start exactly the way he pitched in Oakland, where he was efficient. He got into the sixth inning. I think he gave up four hits that game, and so those are the things we're focused on today. And, Brad, if he can do that, the Mariners have a very good chance of their fifth straight win. All right, thank you, Jen. It'll be the first sweep. They've already won the series, which is great news. And Mr. Snell on the mound, we heard Walk talk about him. My guess is he might make an appearance in your Northwest Ford stores, keys to the game. Boy, you're just a pro My prognosticator, man. You're <laughs> really sharp. I'm peeking, too. That's what <laughs> well, let's get after those keys. Uh, key number one. Speed kills. It's been kind of the reoccurring theme of the show, but boy, it's made a huge difference. Look at how the Tigers have reacted to it. Now, they've had hard trouble with, uh, controlling the running game. If it was Bonneman slide stepping and allowing a flat fastball to get nailed, or you take Verlander's approach. Hey, I'll just be one sixth of the plate. I don't care if they run. And the Mariners end up getting two or three stolen bases, scoring all those runs. I mean, they have to do that to win, but boy, it's had a big effect in this series. Next, rebound. That's what's got to happen here. Ian Snell had a terrific performance in Oakland. He stumbled mightily in Texas. A lot of people have stumbled there. I think he didn't have his big arm. He's going to have that back this time around. He's fighting the flu, but I see him bouncing back big against a team that he pitched very well against last year. A two ERA over two starts. A lot of right hand inning. That should work well for Ian today. Last but not least, hey, it's the varsity. Max Scherzer, the young pitcher that came in the Edwin Jackson trade. Coming over with a big resume. 174 strikeouts and 170 innings in the National League. Hey, you know, Kansas City twice. That doesn't really count, Brad. He's now in the varsity. <laughs> <laughs> you got to face all nine guys. I don't know if he's gotten that memo yet, because you wouldn't know that if you play Kansas City. No, you face nine guys in this league. Yeah, not yet. Well, Ian Sal on the mound uh, today. Team playing with a lot of confidence. As a starting pitcher, can you feel that, the four-game win streak? Can you feed off that a little bit on the mound? I think so. You just want to go out there and kind of keep the game moving. Get sure. the offense back in there. Let them go to work. So uh, if Ian can do that, good things are going to happen. You can keep drafting off the team for your keys. I'll keep drafting I, off right. you uh, uh, down here, and <laughs> we'll right. keep drafting off the big guys calling the game, which is Dave Niehaus, Mike Blowers in the booth. So a four-game win streak, Dave, and a beautiful day. A perfect setting today for baseball. You know, it's funny. The first two games of this series are ruthless closed anything but today what a day we have for baseball on this sunday as the m's go for a sweep and to you all a very happy sunday with mike blowers i'm dave niehaus a, a series win already a sweep yeah. would be the merch you know cherry on top it really would be and i think when you take a look at what the guys did on the road trip and the struggles that they've had and how well they've played at home it'd be a nice way to finish this series with another series coming in right behind it with baltimore a team you would think they'd be able to handle with baltimore really struggling but yeah this would be nice they handled one of the game's premier pitchers last night in justin verlander and in kind of a microcosm of the game is in the seventh inning when they had everything kind of going mixing their way well i think the thing that we're seeing right now is the mariners are catching a few breaks but the most important thing is that they're taking advantage milton bradley last night pretty good curveball from verlander he takes it for a ball take a look at it certainly looks like it's outside according to the tracer it was a strike but milton gets another opportunity ends up working a walk that's been a big part of the mariners game making pitchers work and then he takes off and steals. they're running all over the place milton bradley with a big stolen base in the seventh inning casey Kochman with nobody out just trying to move him over hits the ball deep to right 
planks off the glove. Milton Bradley making sure that it falls on the ground, and when it does, he scores easily. So the bottom line is they're taking care of any advantage they get. They're going to have to take advantage of that, and I think that's big for this offense. Incidentally, Milton Bradley has been a late scratch for today's game. and got a little bit of a cat problem, so he is not in the lineup this afternoon. Looking at... Uh, today's starters. First of all, for the Mariners, Ian Stell has been away with with a, a problem. He lost a relative in Florida, had to go to the funeral. He's back, and he's pitching, if not on the pitch count. And they're going to keep a good eye on him because he's got a touch of the flu. He has the flu, so they're worried about that. What, where's his strength going to be at? The Detroit Tigers a very good offensive club, so Ian's going to have to be on his game. I got a feeling that the bullpen will probably get some work in if his pitch count gets up early because of that flu. The uh, Detroit Tigers picked up Max Scherzer from the Arizona Diamondbacks. This guy can rush it up there. He's a strikeout pitcher. Former number one pick for the Diamondbacks. And if you take a look at his overall numbers throughout his career, more strikeouts than innings pitched. He has pitched well so far. He has faced Kansas City a couple of different times. I think the Mariners, who have not seen him, go out and do what they've been doing, make him work, take a lot of pitches. So there are a few brooms in the audience here this afternoon as the M's go for the sweep against the Detroit Tigers. Good to have you aboard. Back with the starting lineup, stand the game right after this. One of those days here in the Pacific Northwest. What a day we have for baseball. Final game of the three-game series here at Safeco Field between the Mariners and the Detroit Tigers with the Mariners winning the first two games of this three-game series. Boys will be boys. This is called find your own hat. All the hats are in a pile. Everybody wanting to find their own hat. And who got there first? Looks like David Ardsma got his hat first. But look at John Wetland. He took them all. <laughs> <laughs> He's the bullpen coach. 
And uh, so the bullpen crew is really something special. <laughs> Ever since he arrived on the scene last year, you never know what they're going to have next down there. Last year it was helmets. Those were taken away from them. Let's have a look at the lineups, Mike. Thank you, Dave. And for the Tigers this afternoon, leading things off, it'll be Jackson. Johnny Damon back in the lineup. being a nice pinch hit for the Tigers last night. He will hit second, and it's Ordonez and Cabrera, two guys off to a great start this year. Gian Inge, Avila getting the start behind the plate. He will hit seventh, and it's Sizemore. And Santiago, former Mariner, will hit ninth. Take a look at Ian Snell and his numbers and what he was able to do last year. Well, Ian Snell's first pitch is a bit high, and uh, that's something the Mariners will be concerned about. Today is his command. And a high fly ball hit to left field and fairly deep. And back on the warning track and up against the fence out there. Missing the ball out there is the left fielder Eric Burns. And on his way to third base with a triple is going to be Austin Jackson. We'll take a look at it in the daytime. The ball will carry much better than at night. And Eric Burns get all the way back against the wall, hits the wall, and then it looks like the ball hits the wall, ricochets off of his glove and lands on the warning track as Jackson goes into third base. So the second pitch is off the wall, almost a collision on the base pass. And here is Johnny Damon now. Taking outside ball one. Scott Berry is the man calling. Balls and strikes this afternoon. A ball and a strike. Tigers headed to LA to take on the Angels in a four game series beginning tomorrow in Anaheim. And the Mariners will welcome in the Baltimore Orioles. Trying to salvage the final game of their three game series against the A's today. At the Oakland Coliseum. Two and one to count. Open off to a great start. Three mile an hour fastball and they count two balls and two strikes on Damon may have taken a cut at a ball that particular time. Three and two. And on deck is Magli Ordonez. And he walked him. So some storm warnings up here in the first inning for Ian Snell. Gives up a triple and comes back to walk Johnny Damon and Maglio Ardonez, a man who's four for seven against Ian Snell, will be the hitter. And that's down low, ball one. One ball and no strikes. And that finds the mark at the knees. So the count one and one. He needs a double play ball here, or at least a punch out. He needs an out. Get him on the right roll, I think, more than anything else. And a fastball hit to right field, and Ichiro will come in, make the grab. Jackson tags it third and holds it third with a throw coming all the way in down the second base. Alertly goes Johnny Damon. Good base running by Johnny Damon. Take a look at the throw by Ichiro. Air mails it all the way home, thinking Jackson with his speed was going to take off. Kochman tried to cut it off, wasn't able to do that. Dave said Damon will end up down to second base. What a throw, but that eliminates a double play. And here's the birthday man of the day. Miguel Cabrera, 27 years of age today. Now 
93 mile an hour fastball. To the cup took 3.2 seconds a minute. Each row caught the ball to get it back to home plate. Jackson over a third as fast. I'm not sure he could have covered the ground that quickly. He would have been out. And strike three call right at the knees. So Snell one out away from the. Getting out of a pretty good little jam here in the first. Well, Dave, you talked about it. Needed a couple outs, one a shallow fly ball, and then a fastball after a couple pitches away. Paints the inside corner on Cabrera and sets him down. And Cabrera is gone, and Guillen steps up to the plate. Strike to Carlos. High strike at that. And a little bit off that time, but away. Last time the Mariners swept the Tigers here in a three game series was back in 03. And he went, I think. Yes, he did. One and two. It looked like a good change up for me. It's down in the zone. Good sink to it. And a high pop up. He should get out of it. Kotzman coming down right near the first base coach's box makes the catch and if he had still needed some encouragement he certainly got it here in the first inning getting in some trouble and getting off the hook. Walks a tight rope, makes it from one stanchion to the other without falling off. Let's look at the Mariners. For the Mariners, it'll be Ichiro, Pickens, and Gutierrez. Lopez Jr., the DH, hits fifth. Eric Burns is starting the lineup late. He will hit six, and it's Kochman, Moore, and Jack Wilson, the shortstop, hitting ninth. Max Scherzer off to a good start this year. You can see what he's done so far an ERA of 164. Well, Ichiro had himself quite a night last night. Single, double, triple. And the breaking ball down low and inside to him. And had a chance at the cycle. Phil Cook wouldn't throw him a strike in the eighth inning. A ball 
on his strikes. So, sir, 25 years of age out of Missouri. And a ground ball, two second, bobble, picked up, throw the first. Sizemore stays with it and throws out Ichiro. Let's look at the Tigers defense. Yeah, behind Scherzer this afternoon will be Damon Jackson and Ordonez in the outfield. Across the infield, Brandon Edge, Ramon Santiago, former Mariner, gets to start at shortstop, and it's Sizemore and Cabrera on the right side. The Villa will get to start behind the plate. And here's Figgy. Low ball one. That's off the inner edge. Angels went to Toronto and swept the Blue Jays and went again today. And the Tigers are on the way to. Anaheim after this game. The Yankees already beat the Rangers today, five to two. In New York. Texas is cooled off. Yes, they have. Three and one. Strike on the outside corner. How about that game last night? That's the Cardinals. How about that one? Six hours and 53 minutes. 19 pitchers used. Let's see what the transactions look like today. They had to <laughs> take care of some of those guys out in the bullpen, I'm sure. So, Tiggins, another base on ball. That's his 10th already this year. And here's the hot bat. In the Mariner lineup, and the man who leads the league in number of hits so far, Franklin Gutierrez, he got 20 of them. Number two in batting average, a 417 batting average. Scott Pedsevdik of Kansas City. How about that? How about it? Good yeah. for him. Man leading the league in hitting after a week. <gasps> Strike over the outside corner. Two weeks, actually. Get a chance to talk to him about it on this next road trip as we go to Kansas City. Shares are just a little token toss over the first. Next big kid. Listen, at 6'3", he looks taller than that. He does. Oh. Easy play out there for Sizemore. Two down. Jose Lopez will be the hitter. He'll be a, probably a little bit overdue for a long ball. Just like Scherzer likes to throw his two seamer in on the right handers. Just jam Gutierrez. Maybe if Lope can get one out over the plate a little bit. Ball will carry a little bit better in the daytime here at Safeco Field. He's going to have a shot today. Way inside. All fastballs. There the runner. 
goes. He pitches outside corner. Strike goes to the second. In time. So Figgins is shot down by Alex Avila to Scott Sizemore. And the first inning yields a, a goose egg for the Mariners. As we go to the second, the Mariners and the Tigers. No score. The Tiger third baseman will be the first to look at Ian Snell and then Alex Avila and then Scott Sizemore. That's going to be out of play. Doug Fister, who kind of started all of this, will get the call tomorrow night. What a roll the Mariners are on. Well, the thing that everybody's so excited about and talking about is the offense and the way the guys are coming alive and scoring runs, which is a great thing. But if you look at it, for those four games, starting with Fister, the Mariners pitching overall has an ERA of just over two. Quality starts from all the starters, and Doug was able to get the guys going. Vargas had a nice outing. And Ryan Roland Smith last night. Two and two. Felix in the mix. I think you can now start to talk about Cliff Lee. And when he is going to have his first outing as a Mariner. And that's down low and outside ball three three balls and two strikes. It will probably be when we return on definitely will be when we return home from this next road trip. Whether or not it's on Friday the 30th. So that's fouled away. It's still three and two. Or on Saturday the 1st of May. But I think it's going to be one of those two days. Everybody's looking forward to having him on the mound Get to start against the Texas Rangers. And a little bit low. So already a couple bases on balls. And Alex Sevilla. The hitter. His daddy, Al Avila, is the vice president and assistant general manager of the Detroit Tigers to Dave Dombrowski. He 
was just called up last year when we were in Detroit. He, did, he was. And a runner going, and it's popped up to left field. Looks, look out out there. Eric Burns almost lost that ball. This time of the year, left field is a tough field for the outfield. As you can see, he has the sunglasses on, trying to shade the sun, stays with it. They're able to make the catch. <laughs> that is a bad feeling when you're out there and you lose it. Nice job to stay with it. That tells us he may have had a little bit of a problem with that ball hit by Austin I, Jackson. I think too. so, because you can see him just drift on it as it went back and hit off the wall. It's it's tough. Left field this time of the year is, is tough during the daytime. Here's Scott Sizemore, and the second baseman takes a strike. But outside, as we mentioned, Milton Bradley, a late scratch. Understand he's had a little tender knee and also tender calf. Right. There is Milton. One, two. One size more. See, it's now topping out at 93 miles an hour. Change up at 76. And strike three call that time. Nice slide. Let's take a look at the last pitch. See Adam Moore set up on the outside corner. Freezes Sizemore as it hits the inside corner. Brings him up. And this is Ramon Santiago. Strikes Baltimore and Oakland. No score in that game. Orioles off to their worst start since 1988 with that 1 and 11 record. 1 and 2. Here's playing over into left center. Not real deep. Or is each your own? Mike Burns fairly deep in straightaway left field. Good catch. Good stop by Adam Moore. Game first time through the lineup. Looks like Ian's had better success pitching the Tigers inside. He's tried to go in there a couple of times with Santiago and he's fouled them off. So Ian's goes on the 3 2 strike three call over the outside corner. Here in the second, leadoff base on ball doesn't hurt him as we go to the bottom half of the second inning. The Mariners and the Tigers game three of this three game series. No score.
Jose Lopez, who was at the plate when Sean Figgins was thrown out to end the first inning, steps in to lead off the second and takes a strike from Max Scherzer on the inside corner. Lopez and then Junior. And then Eric Burns, the left fielder. They pop up into shallow left field in the shortstop gone. So Santiago takes care of that. Quickly one down. American League West rival, the Texas Rangers. They visit uh, the Mariners here at Safeco Field on Friday, April the 30th. That's also Felix Hernandez bobblehead night. Presented by FSM, the first 20,000 fans taking home the second collectible statue of the 2010 bobblehead series. For tickets, you can visit Mariners.com slash bobble. Ken Griffey Jr. takes ball one, one ball on no strikes. Anthony's. When Jr. flied out last night against Samaya in the eighth inning, he hit a 102 mile an hour fastball. On a line to center field. Anthony's, one and two. He also put Verlander on the seat of his pants. Getting a ball back up the middle. Verlander made a nice play on it, but he ended up on the back side of the mound. Toward the hole and through. Pulls that pitch right into the hole. And they had the shift on. It's like a baseman size more was pulled way over, but Junior hit it hard enough to get it through the right side of the infield. Eric Burns, the hitter now. All outside. Last year's teammates facing each other, Scherzer and Burns, both with the Diamondbacks. Line. Take a look at Inge. Nice diving effort. An easy double as it hits the corner of the fence out there. And the Tigers playing back. We'll concede a run for an out here as Casey Kutzman is the hitter. Side and high, change up. Is Cotsman and now coming to the plate. Here comes Burns and he nuts it, gets it down, but the ball's held on to. Throw through the second base, not in time down there. 
So the Mariners get a run. On the base hit by Kotsman. Eric Burns tried to come in. Lowered his sh shoulder and tried to knock the ball away from the villa, but couldn't do it. And Casey Kotsman keeps on running. Cabrera cuts the ball off. I think maybe he thought Burns was going to try to score on the play. So he tried to get him to cut it up. As you see, Eric Burns, wow, he hits him pretty hard. He was able to hang on to it. So two outs. Right a collision will give you the play. It will be scored in the second, and that's high. Nine, three, six, four, two on Eric Burns. As Coxman goes down to second base. Two and all. Another look, he lowers his shoulder, pushes him. Good play by Avila. Kid needs a couple of base hits to get it over. I, I think so. I, obviously, for a young catcher, he has a lot on his plate trying to work with all the pitchers and take care of his defensive duties first. But you'd like to get a little bit of an attitude adjustment, throwing in a couple of hits. Two and two. Smile on his face. And took a bad cut that time with a pitch high and outside, and the side is out. But the Mariners draw first blood as they get one run here in the second inning and lead one. So as we go to the third, a one nothing Mariner lead. What a day to be either at the ballpark, out on the water, just driving around here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Beautiful Sunday afternoon. Nice crowd here at Safeco Field. Time for our AT&T trivia, trivia question. We understand that uh, this is for you and me today. On this date in uh, 87, uh, who am I question? I joined Willie Mays as the only member of the 500 career home run and four home run in a game club. Mm -hmm. I think I know who it is. I think I know who it is too. I think 
is Mike Schmidt. That's who I think it is. He Michael four, Jack. He had four home runs against the Cubs. I was watching the game. Michael Jack Schmidt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's who I think it is. Here we go. In the third, Austin Jackson, who had that triple off the fence in left field in the first. This kid is hit in 10 of 11 games. And a fly ball to left field, going to drop for another base hit. So he's two for two. And Johnny Damon, later down. Tomorrow, well, you can get your friends and, and your family and head out here. The ECU family night at Safe Gold Field. For as little as $10, you're going to get great seats and see the Mariners host the Orioles. Plus, the savings uh, keep adding up. The $2 hot dogs and special discounts at the Mariners team store. The tickets you can visit, Mariners.com. Johnny Damon takes down low, ball one. Again, same spot. And a base hit to right field. Sharply stroked. Runners at first and second with nobody down, and now you get into the high rent district. The Maglio Ordonez and the Miguel Cabreras. Maglio, a fly ball to Ichiro in the first inning. A runner on third, and Ichiro made the throw all the way to home plate. Runner wasn't able to score. Fly ball should move the runner from second to third as Gutierrez will make the catch and heading to third base, making it easily will be Jackson. So when is it the corners down with one down? Similar situation for Cabrera. That he had back in the first inning, he was able to strike him out on a fastball inside, pitched him away early in the count, and then snuck a nice two seam fastball in the inside corner to strike him out looking. If he can get him to hit the ball on the ground, Cabrera does not run well. He should be able to turn two. in the upper deck I think wow what a shot what a shot by Cabrera and just like that the Tigers lead it three to one his third home run of the year looks like a change up maybe a breaking ball that stayed on the inner half see Adam Set up away, and that pitch runs right back on the inside corner. It looks like a changeup. That one in the upper deck, a 403 foot blast as the pitch is popped up to Carlos Guillen. And the left fielder, Eric Burns, makes the catch. 
to down there, right through the exit tunnel, and we understand that was career number, home run number 200 for Miguel Cabrera. Fastball that challenged him. And that's going to be into the stands. Two and two. Tigers bludgeoning you to death. They don't run at all. I mean, they were last in the league last year. Stolen bases. They only have two this year. That by the, their leadoff guy, the kid. Right, Jackson. Well, they hope that they can set the table for Ordonez and Cabrera. Brandon Inge has some pop in his bat. Up to 53 pitches now for the game. As we mentioned before the game, he's had the flu. And an easy fly ball out there for Gutierrez. And the three run bomb here by Cabrera in the third. The Tigers are on the board with three on three hits. And as we go to the bottom of the third, they lead it 3 1. Jack Wilson leads it off here in the bottom half of the third and uh, takes a strike. And another one right at the knees.
right off the end of the bat. I was able to watch Scherzer on TV with Arizona a couple different times, and I remember him 95 plus. He certainly doesn't have that today. He's had a couple of shoulder injuries that have bothered him a little bit, but he's 93. Pretty good running fastball. Looks like he has a decent changeup. And a foul ball outside the third, and ends will stay with it. So one down. It's going to be answered to the who am I? AT&T trivia question. In 87, I joined Willie Mays as the only member of the 500 career home run and four home run in the game club, and we were both right. Michael Schmidt of the uh, Pittsburgh of the uh, Philadelphia Phillies. One for one on the year, Dave. Yep. Down low to eat your old ball one. First pitch strikes a bit of an issue for Max Scherzer. Two for a level. And again, Enns will try to slide and make the catch, but it's out of his reach. First base by Santiago. Major League Baseball, People Magazine, and the Mariners are looking for individuals who make a difference in our community. 30 everyday All Stars will be honored at the 2010 All Star Game in Anaheim. And to nominate, go to peopleallstars.com. John Figgins down low. Fister against Brad Bergeson of the Baltimore Orioles, a pair of right handers. Tuesday, Vargas against David Hernandez. And then Wednesday, Felix and Kevin Millwood. That'll be quite a matchup. And the Mariners are off on the road for a week to Chicago and Kansas City. Got it? Now he goes on strikes, and here in the third, the Mariners are one, two, three. We go to the fourth inning of play. The Tigers on the three-run home run lead it three to one.
All right, Angie, thank you very much. Shin Su Chu. I always like to say that very slowly. He's a heck of a player. <laughs> And right now we've seen uh, an onslaught by Miguel Cabrera. What a hitter he is. He went up her tank with a three-run homer. That was impressive. Well, and that's what the Tigers do, and that's what Cabrera is supposed to do and Ordonez. And Ian in the first inning was able to get by that. Yep. Didn't work out for him back in the third, so now he finds himself down three to one. back on the office to try to score some runs. It's going to be interesting to see how long Ian can stay with it. He's yep. got the flu. He's coming off a couple of deaths in the family, so he's a little bit... Yeah, you know, his emotions have got to be frayed today coming into this ball game. Well, all of that and with the flu on a physical side of it, pitching, you need your legs, and it's probably the first thing that's going to go for him. You're going to lose that blower half, and he'll keep an eye on to make sure that he's able to keep the ball down in the zone. The good news, as Don Wakamatsu pointed out, as did Rick Adair, they've got plenty of guys ready for duty in the bullpen. So they're in good shape. Column A, Kelly, to name two. Go to Sean White. Undoubtedly look to save David Ardsma, who's been working a lot. Avila, the catcher, boy, he took a pop from Eric Burns. Eric loaded the shoulder in on him. That's tough when you're a catcher, too. You just stand there knowing that you have somebody going full speed into you, but he was able to hold on to the ball. I think he draws a walk on four pitches for Alex. He saw that there was going to be contact, and he was able to brace himself. That was the key. Look at the base he's got. A great base. Ducked his shoulder, and then he came up ready to throw. Made a good throw to second base. Yeah. AC Kochman had to dive back into second. Clean play. Nice oh. try by Eric. Remember that? That's what uh, Wetland member John Wetland talked to him oh God, years ago in New York. It's a good country hardball. Scratch out their run. The Tigers go deep. Scott Sizemore struck out looking. Snell has struck out three, and all three strikeout victims were observing Cabrera, Sizemore, and Santiago. Going to have to talk to Snell. Snell trying to also rebound off of subpar performance in Texas in his last outing. Pitched well in his uh, first game. Boy, he got knocked around the second game. And no decision at Oakland on the six, four hits over six innings. At Texas, three innings, eight hits, five runs, four earned, two walks, no Ks. And he gave up a home run. Home run that he gave up today. It looked like a changeup. It looked like Miggy went down with the one, the front arm, right? He did. It looked like Adam. He was set up away, wanted to pitch away. It ran back over to the inside part of the plate. Cabrera was out in front just a little bit, but he, as you can tell when you look at him, he's a big, strong guy and was able to keep his weight back just long enough and launched it up into the second deck. Okay. See Teixeira getting loose. So Teixeira, Colome, and Kelly, three guys we haven't seen in the last few days, they're all good to go. 2-0 to Snell. We're in the fourth. Sizemore at the dish. 3-0. Ian's walked three. Struck out three. Giving up a three-run home. Back with a strike. Three and two. Well, couldn't ask for a better setting here. In Seattle, blue sky, bright sunshine. Eric Burns can attest to that. He made a heck of a catch fighting the sun in left field. Good crowd. Salute the kids' day. Any postcards made? Fire away. Three two pitch to Sizemore. Up high. Get deeper in a jam here. Nobody out. Two on. Take a look at our Geico quote, Ozzie Gian. This ought to be entertaining on yesterday's loss. I'm going to sleep like a baby. I'm going to wake up every two hours and cry. <laughs> PV and Thornton each allowed a run in the bottom of the eighth to erase a 2-1 White Sox lead. And right now, Ozzie, Ozzie's a beauty. <laughs> he is. His, enter, his entertainment value is always high. And we'll see him in the great city of Chicago. 
next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday before heading off to Kansas City. A quick six game road trip. Snell has walked four. He faces Ramon Santiago. Button. Bump play is in order. Santiago, the backup shortstop. And Jackson on deck. He has a couple of hits in the game. Lopez playing up third. Strike call to Ramon Santiago. Late inning replacement last evening. Flyed out to left field in the ninth inning for the second out right after. We Tinsley waved Milton Bradley over closer to the line. 2 2 pitch and he slapped it, tried to drop one in there. Milton took a couple steps to his left and made the catch. Play on. Back in time is Vila. Mariners are on in the second. Tigers responded with three in the third. An upper deck left field blast by Miguel Cabrera. 0 1 too high. So far, it looks like the Mariners are going with the standard bump play. So he puts it on Lopez to try to read it. He thinks Santiago trying to bunt the ball to third base side. He and Snell, a good athlete, he can get off the mound. So Lopez has got to wait and see if he can make a play first. Oh, goes the other way. Coxman, nicely done. Talk to Coxman on the round table portion on the radio side about his ability to attack as a first baseman a la John Olerud and Keith Hernandez and JT Snow. Great play here. Well, this is exactly the reason why they tell you to bump the ball to third. You can see Kochman right on top of the play. You have a much better chance to be bumped at the third, make the third baseman try to make a play if he can. But instead he bunts it to the first base side. Nice play by Casey Kochman. Casey said JT Snow played with the Giants and the Angels was his favorite guy because he was always on the move and very aggressive. That's a heck of a play. One out first and second. <laughs> Top of the order Austin Jackson is having a fine day triple to left center and a single to left. Jackson. 0 and 2. Sizemore at second. Santiago at first. You get out of a first and uh, second jam, second and third jam in the first inning. Down low. Second inning, Snell walked the leadoff man and then got a fly out. A heck of a catch by Burns and then a couple strikeouts to get out of it. Third inning, a three run homer by Cabrera. Center field, Gutierrez makes the catch. Runners retreat, two down. Take a look at our Quest High Speed Pitch brought to you by Quest High Speed Internet. Both guys pretty loose today. Scherzer at 95 and Snell at 94. I'll bring up Johnny Damon. He's got a walk, single, and a run scored. Scored ahead of Cabrera. Three run homer. Well, number off the end of the bat. Lopez will throw it out. So, a nice escape job for Ian Snell, aided and abetted by the fine defensive play by first baseman Casey Katz with 3 1.
Craig Council still swinging the bat. Welcome back, everybody. We've got Franklin Gutierrez leading off. Today's salute to Kids Day. Bowling salute to Kids Day here at the ballpark. And Jarrett joins us. Good to see you, pal. How are you? Good. Good. Good to have you with us. Who's your favorite Mariner? Um, Sean. Sean Figgins. Are you an infielder when you play baseball? Yeah. All right. Second base? Yeah. Like watching him, huh? What, what, what do you like? Is he showing you stuff? If you, if you take him stuff uh, that he's done and you try to imitate it now? Yeah. All right. Very cool. <laughs> Two and one to Franklin Gutierrez. Is your Little League start, uh, season started yet? Yeah. All right. How many wins you got? Um, I think two. Yeah. And you're the leading hitter, right? The home run hitter? No. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? Ten. Ten? What's the name of your team? Um, I forgot. That's all right. It happens. Two balls, two strikes. It's a good theater. Center field for Jackson. Yester, the International League Player of the Year last year. That's the catch for now. It's your first time uh, to Safeco this year? No. No? Oh, so you're a regular. What's your favorite part about coming to the ballpark? To watch them. Yeah. Oh, that, what, and what position, what position do you play? Second base. Second base. Any other, do you pitch occasionally? Yeah. Very cool. Off the end of the bat, a little chalk on that stick, two down. He couldn't, he couldn't ask for a better setup here, right? You here with your family? Yeah. Yeah, who came with you? Mom, my dad, and my sister. So you're going to go home tonight, you're going to watch this on TV. I know everybody's running a tape, right? So make sure you give a nice big smile for everybody. So bring all your buddies over and watch. Hey, dude, that was on TV. <laughs> you know? Look right there and wait. <laughs> there right. right there. <laughs> all right, Jared, good to see you, man. Hey, good luck to you, okay? Thanks. And Mike, to sign your baseball for you. Keep watching Sean. You'll learn a lot, okay? Hey, ain't that the truth. Griffey Jr. going to base hit to right score on the Catchman RBI in the second inning. Have fun, Jared. Okay, bud. Yeah. One and one. Scherzer is one one to Jr. Broken bat fly ball, short right field. Coming in Ordonez. Mariners are gone in the fourth. Six pitch inning for sure is a very effective. Jared, thanks for stopping by. And it's a 3 1 Detroit lead. By Quest High Speed Internet, get your blazing speeds that won't burn up your wallet. And by your Western Washington Toyota dealers, for over 30 Toyota offers, visit buyatoyota.com.
the Olympic mountain range. If you want some snow, it's there for you. Have at it. Love the contrast. We're driving around yesterday. The Olympics, you got the mountains over there with the snow, and then you look at the other ranges. And the sign of spring. Yes, sir. Maglia Ordonia is to lead it off here in the fifth. Three Harper to Lopez. Now, big out. Here's the guy that did damage last time up. Two on, one out, third inning. And Miguel Cabrera. Boy, he leave the building. Led the team last year in batting average, OPS, home runs, and RBI. And here's another drive. Looks like it may stay in the ballpark as Burns is near the track. Made it to one of the deepest parts of the park. Another big out. Hey, visit the official online shop of the Mariners at Mariners.com. You can browse the largest selection of official gear, including the latest apparel, nostalgic memorabilia, and authentic classics for the whole family. Get your gear from the official source at Mariners.com shop. Accept no substitutes. First inning that Snell has retired a leadoff man in the ballgame. Carlos Guillen, two for seven career against Snell in both the home runs. Ian Snell out of Dover, Delaware, an outstanding athlete in high school. He's down in the Lakeland, Florida area now. 28 years old. Ball, I stop. I think at this point, Ian 78 pitches in the game here in the fifth. I think if Don was Ian being under the weather to start the game, if he get one more inning at him, I think he would be thrilled with that. Giving up three runs on four hits. Punches one. Burns coming on. Wow! He made the catch! No, no. It. Greg Gibson. I hope he's okay yeah. because he was a late entry into the ball game because of Milton Bradley with some leg problems. Two base hit. Burns, he's already made contact with the wall, tried to run over catcher, and now lays out trying to make a catch as we look at our Coors Light freeze cam. Good effort as usual with Burnsy. A layout, got it in the glove, the big floppy glove, and he couldn't hold on. And he rolled that hand over, and the glasses go askew, and the ball comes out. Tough break. Yeah, hopefully his wrist is okay. He rolled up on his wrist. Nice effort. There wasn't any doubt that he was going to die for that, was there? None. <laughs> <laughs> Sweeney was joking around in the batting cage before the game. He said, Burns is putting on a show out there in, in left field, and he's banging the ball. He got to put him in the game. So they. Ty Van Berkeley and Rod Allen from over in uh, the Detroit TV show. They played uh, ball in Japan together in Hiroshima. And they said a lot of times that would happen in Japanese baseball. If you're out there having a good BP or something, you might get yourself inserted in the lineup that night. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that's obviously not the reason why Eric was put in there. But Ty and Rod, you played over there. You yeah, know. I know. <laughs> when they talked about that, that was hilarious. A little bit of a mistiming there. It looked like Jack Wilson wanted to try a pick on Gein. He went to cover second base, and he ended up throwing the ball to home. I think they would have had him. Gein was way off the bag at second base as Jack snuck in behind him. Owen oh 2 to Inge. He's walking flat to center to. Two outs here in the Tigers fifth. Ball and two strikes. Baltimore Orioles come to town tomorrow. And right now as we stand here, Baltimore with a 6-1 lead at Oakland in the sixth inning. 
Orioles off to a miserable start. Down low. 1 and 11, the Baltimore record starting today. Brad Ferguson, we've seen a lot of him. He'll go tomorrow. A couple of the taller guys you'll see him on the mound. Doug Fister, 6'8. Ferguson, about 6'5, 6'6. 2 2. Struck him out. Big strikeout for Ian Snell. He's through five, trailing 3 1. Coming up in the home fifth, Burns, Katzman, and Moore. Catchman and Moore. Big blow today. Three run Miguel Cabrera. One out, three run homer in the third inning. Max Scherzer. Breaking ball and a good one. Mariners and their scouting report on Scherzer says his changeup is a strike pitch and his out pitch. He will double up as he just did. Going two. That's the way. Burns in his first time up, double to left. Tried to score on the catchman base hit. Unsuccessfully. Barreled the catcher Avila, who held on to the ball for the out. Trying to score. One and two. So we've seen him crash into the wall, run into the catcher, and it looks like roll up his wrist out in left field normal day for Eric Burns. You know? uh, let's see if the Seahawks <laughs> need somebody to cover some kicks. He's your man. <laughs> two, two. Popped up. Avila has a play. He makes it. The Mets and the Cards play 20. You know the greatest thing that happened to them? It'll play till tonight. Yep, that's a huge advantage. I was saying earlier today that probably keep an eye on the transactions. I would think that they would have to, both sides would have to do something to help their bullpen out. By the end of the game, you have position players pitching and the pitchers are playing in the outfield. Kyle Lose was in left field, had to make a play. Matter of fact, Lose one of the plays it was a sacrifice fly. He was smart. He didn't try to air it out. He just got it back in. But, I mean, that's that's crazy. And to go what 18, 19 innings with no with zeros on the boards. So look at Kachman. RBI double game winner last night. Last night his game winning RBI was sitting fastball, got a change up and rifled it off the glove of Rayburn in right field. I stay mentally sharp at that moment too. 20 innings. 
for some of the guys that end up 0 for 7 or 8 in that game. Ashton drives one deep right field, got plenty of steam on it. It's leaving the yard. Casey Gutsman, his second home run as a man, his first at St. Go Field. It's 3 2 Detroit. On a 1 1 pitch. Not much doubt about it. He stays behind this nicely. Fastball in the middle of the plate and down. It had that sound. Goes deep into the stands out in right field. 371 feet. Catchman, his second home run. He homered in, in Texas upper deck last weekend. Great day for Kotsman. He's driven in both runs for the Mariners. An RBI single to right in second. A home run here. Here's Adam Moore. One and one. Kotsman. Came off a terrific night last night. Big dig out of a throw from Sean Figgins at the uh, back end of a double play. Figgins said, hey, I just need to get it to him. He'll, he'll pick it up, and that's what he did. Adam struggling. Two for 20. 21 now. Two outs. Third strikeout for Scherzer. He's got Adam twice. So watch, here's where the ball lands. On oh, a guy, and it lands in his. Look at a guy, a gentleman sitting right there and landing in his pocket practically. <laughs> about that. Look, there's the one guy that didn't get up and is trying to stay out of the way. <laughs> he heard incoming, he ducked, he ends up with the baseball. <laughs> Jack Wilson, that's something. Mine in his own business. What, he got a hot dog in the hand? He's covering up. Got the ball. Good for him. Well done. Jack Wilson. One hopper to Santiago. That'll do it for the Mariners, but the big blast, Casey Catchman, second home run of the season, is first at Safeco as a Mariner. They close the gap to three to two. Uses three cameras to track every pitch. Graphical enhancements have been added to the EQC tracer this season to give you more information and insight into the game. Mr. Hayward making a name for himself, young man from the Ivy League, his parents from the Ivy League, born and raised in Atlanta, and is impacting immediately.
We're not even out of April. That kid has uh, had some great moments. Two pitchers, Kanakoa Teixeira. Game number four for him. And he'll face the bottom third of the Detroit order. Villa Sizemore Santiago. So Ian Snell gives the Mariners five innings. Coming off the flu, a couple of deaths in the family. Coming off a bad performance last time out. And to share coming out throwing strikes. And that's his M.O. as we look at the numbers for Snell. Five innings, five hits, three runs all earned. Four walks and four keys. 85 pitches and 50 for strikes. Shera made this club coming out of camp throwing strikes. Yeah, Don's looking for him to do that right now. Keep the game right where it's at. Give him a couple of innings. Give the offense a chance. And consider where Ian was coming from to lead the game down three, two after five. Take it. I would agree. Take a look at 85 pitches, 50 of them for strikes. He had four walks in the game. He's able to pitch around those, but back in the third, a couple of base hits and then the big home run from Cabrera. And none of the walks scored. Seems like uh, whether it's the Mariners or the opposition in this first uh, 12 games, walks have been coming around to scoring a very high frequency. And that'll be the case at the end of the year, too. It's just the way the league averages go. Typically, that's a bad idea, but Ian was able to pitch around them today. We'll count to a bill. Fly it out to left and walked. On deck, Scott Sizemore. Great crowd, about 30,000 plus. 3 2 pitch. Right back to Texas. Native of Maui throws out. Avila went out. He has to reach back a little bit to make the play. Ball hit back up the middle. After that, nice play, shorten up the distance, easy throw over to Koch. So Teixeira and his battery mate, Adam Moore, roommates. We get back from Texas, was it last Sunday? We're trying to figure out where the car is, where do we go? We got to get stuff in the apartment. What are we going to do? Where do we go eat? Yeah. <laughs> it's everything. Oh, man. Yeah. Share from a small village in Maui. We have more people in the right field stands than where he grew up. 2 0. Rule 5 pickup from the Yankees from a year ago. He's a double A Trent. Sizemore strikeout looking and a walk so far today on deck Ramon Santiago. Staying down in the zone too. Boy, looks good. Breaking ball hammered foul. Doing a good job. Looks like the old uh, <laughs> machine gun shooting practice, you know? It's pretty good right there. He'd like to get some help from Scott Berry, the home plate umpire. Nice pitch. Eighth pitch coming up. Like that consistency. I remember Wetland, John Wetland talking about what do you like about him? He throws strikes. Talking about to share a 3 2. That time he didn't. We'll bring up the shortstop Ramon Santiago. Take a look at the Mariners calendar brought to you by Sleep Country USA. Baltimore, as we mentioned, comes in. The Orioles up 6 2 at Oakland, seventh inning right now. Day off, go to Chicago and Kansas City, and then right back for Nelson Cruz, Vladimir Guerrero, and the Texas Rangers. 
Cruz leading the American League in homers and RBI. Although they got stopped again by the Yankees, swept in New York 5 2, the Yankees win today. Kotsman, oh, what a play! He'll get the one. Continues to sparkle. That was the ID on him. Great defender. And he continues to make fabulous plays day in and day out. Watch how quickly he gets off the bag to cover a little bit more ground as he holds the runner on. He can put on a clinic. I don't know why, but it seems like his glove just seems bigger than most. Everything goes in there. You Good know call. what I mean? Good call. Good it's friend. not, obviously. It's a regular size glove, but man. Flexible. He yeah. uses it well. He's got great eye hand A lot of confidence in what he's doing. You can see that. So how would you get so good at making digs like that? He said, well, his dad, a longtime baseball guy and scout manager in the minor leagues with the Angels. Tom Kochman used to hit fungos from every part in the infield. You know this from, yep. from playing. That, the spin you get there is totally different from what you're going to get from the guys, you know, the way they throw the ball. And talking to him on the uh, round table today, he said he had to learn how each guy throws. You know, Lopey's making a change from second to third. Jack's pretty, pretty consistent. Also, our performer, Figgy's going from third to second. At least points. Situations, how they throw, at least points, a lot of stuff to learn. Velocity. Some Velocity. guys, I have an automatic sinker. It'll just tail. You yep. have to know that. But I love what Figgy said. Hey, Figgy was in the process of getting eaten alive in a double play in the seventh inning last night. He said, "I just wanted to get it close," and he did. And Kochman dug it out. Well, sometimes in a situation where. Biggins was at second base and the guy taking out. You can't get a lot on it. Mm -hmm. They're taking your legs out from under you and you just try to dump it over there somewhere. Gotcha made a nice play. One and two to Jackson down the line. Foul. Jackson having a nice day. Two for three. A triple. Single and a run scored. Fly out the center. He is very flattered by the comparisons to Mike Cameron. Body type, facially. Cammy's still big time center fielder for the Boston Red Sox. Swing and a miss into Shera. Big strikeout here in the sixth. Mariners down a run. And coming up, the top of the order, each row, Figgins and Gutierrez. All right, thank you, Andy. Beautiful Sunday afternoon. Glad you are with us in the great Pacific Northwest. Mariners going for their fifth consecutive win, trying to complete a sweep of the Detroit Tigers. 
trailing three to two. Casey Katzman got him a little bit closer. One out solo home run in the fifth. There's Ichiro. A couple of ground outs so far today. About his night last night. Three for three, two runs scored, a stolen base. He was a homer away from a cycle. Yeah, it was too bad that he walked in that last at bat. It would have been nice to see him at least take a shot at him. Sean White getting loose in the pen. Mitchell started yesterday, 261, comes into this bat at 294. Look at Ichiro's Amika hit zone. Boy, down the middle, low. Likes that pitch. For every hit, the Mariners get now through the end of the season. Amika Insurance donates $10 to the Boys and Girls Club of Bellevue. Thanks to Amika. Five hits, no errors for Detroit. Two runs, four hits, and no errors. Alberte is warming up. Sam's haircut. haircut right? <laughs> <laughs> Jose Valverde. Full count now to each row. Sean Figgins on deck. Jackson coming on, not going to get split the difference perfectly between Jackson and Santiago. Base hit each row. Pitch really jams and hits it right off the label. Just dumps it out into center field. Nice start for the Mariners getting a leadoff hitter on. Well, the formula has worked. Get each row on, get Figgins on. Have Figgins. Work the count. I think he's already walked six times in this homestead. He's going to walk in a strikeout today. Word on Scherzer is he doesn't have a real good move to second. I mean, first base. It's a token move. 30,419. the yard today. And at third is Inge. Wonder if somewhere along the way he's thrown the ball away a few times going over the first. Bet on it. You see the quick move and then he just lobs it over mm -hmm. there. Something on right here as Biggins checks out Mike Brumley down at third. And today gets the Mariners above 500, getting to seven and six. And one to Biggins. Each row holds. Gets his way outside, two and one. Fielder Damon close to the line and left center fielder Jackson shallow. Doon is in right straight away, not deep. Scherzer might be one of those guys not real comfortable coming out of the stretch. It certainly looks like he's lost some velocity when he's been put in the stretch today. He's gone from 93, 94, he's topped out at 95, but he drops way down into 88, 89 range. To full count. And Figgins' reaction sort of matches what you saw in the Tracers. Goody's on deck. Ray 
That's two strikes. Each row, good lead, gets back. Well, he just lollipops that baby over there. Yeah. Pretty quick with his feet, but he just does not want to throw with any sort of velocity at all over to first. It would sort of, yeah, you make a good point. Trump, somewhere there's some trauma in his immediate <laughs> past. It was a little bit better for him. Not much. And for the double play depth. Three, two. Count the figure. Each row takes off. Driven to right. Ordonez is there. Got a good throwing arm, and they are going to get each row. Lines one. They hit right at Mags. Two outs. You know, there's nothing you can do about that. You're trying to stay out of the double play. Ichiro takes off, stealing on the pitch. Ball hit right at Ordonez. You mentioned a strong arm and throws a strike back into first base. Terrifying feeling. Like I know I'm fast. I'm not quite that fast. Right. The only thing you can hope for is that his throw is going to be off the mark, and it wasn't. Double play. Two outs. Gutierrez has popped out to second. Fly to center. So, Gutierrez, you like the number three hole? Man, I try to approach it like I'm a nine hole hitter. They don't ask me to hit home runs. I can drop down a bun every now and then. Just go up there. I want to hit. I was talking about hitting for the Braves about how coachable he is. And he continues to mature at every game. Clearly, the Mariners' best hitter right now. He's got 20 hits. 21. Jackson's fast. He's not getting that one. Two out double for Gutierrez. And Goody is fourth double of the season. Nice job. It's a fastball down in the zone, stays with it. And that's really the shame, unfortunate for the Mariners. Line drive to right end up in a double play because they had Gutierrez coming up next, who's been their hottest hitter, and he throws a double out into the gap. The chance for Lopez to get him home and tie this score up at 3 3. RBI leader last season. Lopez three runs batted in. Rick Knapp, pitching coach. Still nobody's up in the pen right now for the Tigers. Scherzer at 83 pitches. Gives us an opportunity to listen to Mr. Preston. Colette doing a good job bringing a little Elvis to our lives on a Sunday. Lopez RBI opportunity two down in the sixth. Gutierrez got a base hit ahead in the count two and zero. Lopez ahead here one and zero. Shares are 9 and 11 with the Diamondbacks last year. 9 and 11, a 4.12 ERA. They got knocked around by Kansas City his last time out. 10 5 loss, five innings, nine hits, five runs, two earned. Right back in front of us. Hard luck for Scherzer in that game against Kansas City because Cabrera dropped a two out pop up. And then the next hitter, Jose Guillen, the former Mariner, hit a three run homer.
up has got to be tough with two here. One and two, the count, two out, and Goody's at second. Goody takes off for third, swung on and missed, and Lopez goes down swinging. And going by the wayside of that Mariner threat through six. It's 3 2. Sean White will take over on the mound for the Mariners. the entertainment capital of the Northwest. Raise a force in that American League East, and they're keeping pace with the Yankees. Both teams winning today at nine and three. BJ up, and I saw that home run when I was on the radio side. Boy, he got a low fastball, unloaded. A kid, that's had some declining numbers the last few years. A good player, Johnny Dame is going to lead it off against Sean White. And Sean, so far in his five innings, has been really good. No earned runs for him so far. Johnny Damon walked, single run scored in the ground out today. Johnny Damon yesterday was in the clubhouse when his ring got in. Look at that baby. Estimated to be between 20 and 20, between 22 and 27 thousand dollars a pop. His ring for uh, helping the Yankees win the World Series last season. 2 0. Oh. Johnny, a late signee, one year deal with these Tigers. You want to play poker with him anytime soon? Sure. Put my money on flowers. <laughs> I say that because of Johnny. Right. Johnny getting a one-year, seven-year offer from Detroit. The Yankees supposedly had two for 13. Johnny was set because he was making 13 the last couple of years. Jack Wilson gets rid of it quickly, throws it away. Johnny Damon puts that kind of pressure on you with that speed. Base hit, E6. Take a look at it. Jack ranging over, knows he has to get rid of it quickly, throws off his knee. Unfortunately, the ball gets by Koshman, ends up in the camera well, so Johnny Damon will end up with second base. Yeah, and he. It sounded like he wanted to stay in New mm -hmm. York. 
He's made a great buck over his career, right? You're in a winning situation. Do you take a little short of money to stay in a winning situation? Gets the extra year out of the deal. I'll see why not. There's Rodonia's 0 for 3. Fly out to right center and the ground out to third. Sean White, the third pitcher today for the Mariners. Shara pitched the sixth, struck out one, walked one. Ian Snell started five innings, five hits, three runs all earned, four walks, and four strikeouts. One and one to Ardonias. Back up the middle. Wilson throws him out. Moving to third, Damon. Ride and save on Sound Transit Sounder Train. For more information on schedules and routes, visit soundtransit.org. Miguel Cabrera, monstrous three run homer in the third inning, upper deck left field. Not going to get a chance this time. As Chris Rock once said, I can understand. Well, I have the Tigers today, men in scoring position, one for 11. The one was the, the big hit by Cabrera, so they're just going to take the bat out of his hands and leave it up to Gian. See if they can get a double play and get out of the inning. So Cabrera looks like he's added on a few LBs since we saw him last season when he came in a lot slimmer from the year before. But he can swing the bat. Watch this. It was an 0 1 pitch. Goodness. Nice and easy. And he got 400 feet plus. Hit through the output. How about that? Cabrera's third home run ran his RBI total to 14. Carlos Guillen, who's one for three, doubled to left. Fifth. Right at Figgy, stays with it. Double play out of the inning. Can't draw it up much better than that. Figgy had an absolute rocket hit right at him. He stayed with it, did not olay it. Fought it off, got it to Wilson, double play. And the Mariners. Well, swing in the seventh. Send it back to our Northwest Ford dealership sports desk, Angie Menting.
Good ball game here and a beautiful day at Seattle, Washington. Glad you could join us, everybody, as we look at our Suzuki Kajashi game recap. Here's Casey Katzman. He puts the ball in play here, Mike, in the second inning. Casey having a good day today. It's the ball hard into right field. Ends up getting caught at second base, but drives in a run on the play. As you watch Eric Burns trying to run the catcher over. He's able to hold on to it, though. So that's how the Mariners got on the board, and then Cabrera. No doubt about it. He could stand and admire because he hit it way in the upper deck. Three run shot, 3-1. Three after two and a half. Then in the fifth, how about Casey Cotchman? Another moment for him. Yeah, here he comes again. Gets a fastball in the middle of the plate and down and hits it deep into the seats out in right field. Get the Mariners within a run. And that's where we are right now. Great day to, just, to do just about everything here in Seattle. Temperature at first pitch was 58 degrees. Got to believe it's a little bit warmer than that. Most of the fans, or many of the fans, 30,419, still enjoying some sunshine here. Phil Coke takes over. Phil pitched a third of an inning last night, gave up a run, and walked him in. And the Mariners 4 2 victory. Came over in a trade from the Yankees. Here's Junior to lead it off. Griffey today, a base hit to right and a run score to fly out to right. Breaking ball. One and one, K. Griffey Jr. Shift on for Junior. Swing and a miss. Junior last night 0 for 4. And Ken Griffey Jr. Icon of icons here in Seattle. Guess we get to see his hero at the dish here. 1 and 2. Stop Santiago behind the bag. A one two. If he won for three against Phil Coke. And so far, everything's been away from Junior. Out of the four pitches, three of them have been sliders. Here in the seventh inning, this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners. May not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. We are coming your way above the A in Safeco Field. Throw out a wave there. Dave Sims, Mike Blowers, FSN crew here is that as Eric Burns stands in. With a double thrown out at the plate, which is Sean saw in the recap. It's also fouled out to the catcher. My ball center field coming on Jackson. Going out Santiago. Jackson's got it. Two out. Here's the offensive start today for the Mariners. RBI single in the second, home run in the fourth. Second Mariner home run, first here at Safeco. 
First home run of the season was last weekend, upper deck shot in Texas. It'll be a mistake if he gets a chance to hit one out here. Coke right now is so he wants to pitch Cosman the same way he pitched Junior, everything away. 1 0. A wrinkle in that one. And you can see those last two pitches. One off the plate away, which was a fastball. And last pitch, a slider on the outside corner. Well, Cook, four and three in 72 games with the Yankees a year ago, 4.50 ERA. Almost everything. Avila. He crossed him up. Big time. I was watching it look like I thought it was expecting it to be another breaking ball. Avila before the pitch had put down a number of fingers and that ended up being a fastball. Take another look at it. This is just a fastball. Watch out. Man. Coke born and still lives in Sonora, California. Came over from uh, the Yankees and the Granderson deal with Austin Jackson. Good pitch. Two and two. Two saves for Coke last year. First two in the big leagues. Cap to Katzman, two out, nobody on. This is Calame warming up for the Mariners. On deck is Adam Moore. Three two to Kochman. Walked it. Bang runs aboard. Weather's getting warmer and summer just around the corner. Thank goodness. Lock in your seat at Safeco Field for the Mariners 16 game plan. You're going to enjoy many season ticket holder benefits and secure seats for the biggest games. Here's your phone number 206 346 4001. Call during regular business hours or visit Mariners.com slash 16. Jim Leland has made a decision. Phil Coke is done. And we will have a new pitcher when we come back.
Thanks, Angie. Seventh inning, two out, one on for Adam Moore, who struggled big time. He struck out twice today. He's two for 21 on the season. Ryan Perry, the new pitcher, drops down a bunt, ends charges, and throws him out. So one pitch. And Perry does his job. Mariners are gone. And we turn our attention to the eighth inning. In Javila and Sizemore coming up for Detroit. Three thousand four hundred nineteen, and right now their local heroes trail by one three two. Mariners going for their fourth consecutive win, going for a sweep against Detroit. Right now the margin is the Miguel Cabrera three-run homer in the third inning. New pitcher making a Safeco Field debut is Jesus Calamet. In his third game, he last last appeared down in Texas, and that was back on that was a week ago today, as a matter of fact. Two innings, a two hit, two run ball, one earned run, one walk, and one strikeout. They like this kid. Well, they should. It, it's been a week. I suspect his fastball, he'll rush it up there around 94 miles an hour. Just a matter of whether he can consistently throw strikes after having the week off. In Javila and Sizemore, six, seven, and eight here with the Tigers in the eighth. 96. During spring training, it was impressive. April 8th, brought up from Tacoma when Ryan Langerhans was designated for assignment. Spring training for Kalaman 1 0, 2 saves, 1 4 6 ERA in 11 games. They look at the catchers on deck. Reno. Four pitch walk. That's you know, the only thing you have to worry about when you have a little bit of a layoff. These guys will still work. They'll get their working out in the bullpen, but it's just a little bit different once you step between the lines. Mariner pitching today walked seven, struck out five. We're going to go out to Dr. Colony. The good news none of the walks have scored. And Detroit put the three spot up in the third inning. They got a leadoff single from Jackson. Damon answered with a single. 
Ordonez flied out, and then on an 0 1 pitch, Cabrera homered. Mariners got a Kochman second inning RBI single and a fifth inning Kochman home run. First strike. Too hyped, you just got trust your stuff. Well, you just it is. You feel strong, he hasn't pitched, and you overthrow a little bit probably because you're excited to be in the game. And the plate starts moving around on you. Two and one. I think it's especially difficult for guys that are power pitchers like Colome is. One and one in 21 games with Washington and Milwaukee last year, 21 appearances. 759 ERA. Uh, that looks. He's uh, doing his due diligence on the box there. Yeah, well, Scott Berry, the home plate umpire, isn't seeing it that way. Saw that earlier in the game, too. A couple batters with Ian Snell. Cranked right field. Lots of trouble. Inge to third. They'll hold him up. And Vitro gets it back to Figgins. A double by Avila. It's the first two bagger of the season. Well, you have to come in with a fastball, and when you're missing with it, hitters will time it. Eventually, they get into a count where they're going ahead and turn it loose, and that ball ends up down on the corner. Nice job by Ichiro to get it back quickly. I'm going to bring up the second baseman, Scott Sizemore. Struck out looking and walked twice. We'll also bring up the infield. Going to cut this run down here in the eighth inning. Tigers today, I have them one for 12 with men in scoring position. Mara pitchers have done a nice job of pitching out of some trouble. One to Sizemore. Tigers minor league player of the year last season at Erie and Toledo. 308, 17 home runs, 68 runs batted in. Breaking ball and a good one. In close, cut off this run. 0 and 2. He is getting up to 97 miles an hour. Donald made a lot of hot water. Two on second and third, the one two pitch. Two and two. Long time ago, Ian Snell started this game with five. He's coming in off the flus of death in the family. Bad performance at Texas. Goes five. Turned it over to the bullpen to share white now column. That looked like the right brush for the situation on Peyton that corner. <laughs> Looks like he's going to make him a yes. big part of the plate. <laughs> really? Old Santiago is on deck. Broken back, holds Inge, gets it out. Well, that was big. It's been called one of the most unique giveaways in Mariners history. 
Saturday, May 1st, when the Mariners meet the Rangers, first 20,000 fans will take home an Ichiro Design T-shirt. The shirt's been designed, tested, and approved by number 51 himself. For tickets, visit Mariners.com. Also, maybe the day Cliff Lee makes his Mariner debut. Field remain in close. You remember Santiago last night. One out ninth inning. Lee Tinsley moved Milton Bradley a little bit closer to the left field line and Santiago tried to drop one in there and Milton made the catch. Burns is placed in a very similar position. Popped up at the play. Didn't see it. Somebody must have made a heck of a catch. out Don Wakamatsu getting a couple of strikes right away. Takes the whole idea of a squeeze or bun or anything out of the play. Santiago can certainly handle the bat. He tried to bunt earlier, bunt into the wrong side of the infield. Cosman made it pay for it by getting the runner at third. That's a great play. Really fine play. Back in the fourth. The 0-2 to Santiago. Look out, Tom Brookins. First base coach, former Tiger infielder. So I like watching Larry Bowen when uh, Sheffield would be up, he'd be up in the bullpen. <laughs> Just get out of the way. Don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Adam Moore's done a real good job blocking balls here today. Ball of two strikes, second and third, one out. Infield in close. I'm trying to get himself out of trouble. Pitch. Lopez got a play. Inch is dead meat. Two outs. Nice play by Jose Lopez. See him slap the ball the other way. Lopez backhand doesn't panic at all. Like the way Adam Moore comes up the line to make the tag right away. Hold the runners where they're at. Dangerous thing. He had the ball in the glove. And he can lose the ball out of it on the tag sometime. You can lose that ball. They always tell you to keep the ball in that hand. Keep them together. Put your bare hand over your glove and yep. squeeze it in there like a vice. Mm -hmm. Top of the order, Austin Jackson. Two for four today. First inning triple. Third inning single and a run scored. Since then, he's fly to center and struck out. Almay trying to protect a one run deficit. Looper trouble. Ichiro charging, runner being sent. Avila throw by Ichiro, not in time. 4 2 Detroit. RBI Jackson, his third hit of the day. RBI number five for Austin. Jams him and breaks his bat, hits a little flare out in the right field. Ichiro comes up. Trying to throw, but with two outs, nice jump by Avila. No chance to get him at home.
Santiago all the way to third. Runners at the corners. Johnny Damon has swung a good bat today. Infield hit and a hard base hit back in third. Really unfortunate. Get yourself into trouble. Get a couple of big time outs. And then a broken bat ends up costing you a run. Guy that he walked to lead off the inning. They erased him on a nice play by Lopez. One one to Damon. Next pitch will be number 25 for Column A in the inning. Going against a guy who's got two World Series rings. 09 Yankees, 04 Red Sox. Detroit Mariners eighth inning nine one and two Wilson each row and Higgins coming up. He can't find it today. Twenty six pitches fifteen balls. 11 strikes. Three and one here to Damon. Nobody throwing in the Mariner pen, so this is his inning. Looper Burns coming on, coming on. Can't get it. Foul ball. Well, there's a break. Probably looking at no doubt looking at first and third another runner. Great view at lookout landing. Taking in the action of ballpark. Comfortable shade. Great panorama of this fabulous ballpark. Three and two to Damon. Jackson takes off at first, pitches up high, ball four, bases loaded. And the ever dangerous Maglio Ordonez coming up and nowhere to put him. That'll bring Rick Adair out of the dugout. So they can find a way to get him in the strike zone. You mentioned 28 pitches, 16 balls, 12 strikes. And I know he's throwing 96, 97 miles an hour, but Ordonez is not the guy you want to fall behind. Oh, oh man. Isn't that the truth? American League batting champion 07. Six time All Star. Coming up Wednesday when the Baltimore Orioles are here, when we wrap up the series, Felix Hernandez will be on the mound. Felix picking up a W as first of the season on Friday night, 11 3 over these Tigers. But a big spot here for Colome. Ordonez 0 for 4. Bases loaded, two outs. Really trying to be too fine. It is not working. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh hitter. It's walk two. Giving up two hits. Count evens at one and one. So at third base, you got Santiago. 
Austin Jackson at second. Johnny Damon at first. The one one. Folding. They had Donia stepping in the bucket there. One and two. I'm surprised him a little bit too. 98 miles an hour with that last fastball in the corner. As you see Sean Kelly starting to throw. Ball of two strikes to Ardonez. Ninety-seven miles an hour, thirty-two pitches for Kalman. Jesus trying to get out of even more hot water here at Safeco. A one two to Maglio or Donez. Struck him out. Wow, it's ended. So a Safeco field debut. A little rocky gives up a run. He threw a bunch of pitches. Mariners now down two, but that's a big strikeout getting Ordonez with a base. Mariners in need of some runs here now. Wilson, Ichiro, and Figgins coming up in the eighth inning. Ryan Perry continues. He threw one pitch. One attempt by Adam Moore. Inns throw him out in the seventh inning. And in left field taking over for Johnny Damon is Don Keller. Jack over two today. No balls, two strikes. Jose Valverde. Back up throwing. It stays alive. Valverde comes over from Houston where he had 25 saves last year. 44 and 08 with Houston. 47 and 07 with Arizona. Pitch. Oh, two strikes. The 
Mariners going to have to come from behind here to get this fifth consecutive win and a sweep of Detroit. And a line in, dives, fair ball, flips across. Set. Fine start here in the eighth. Mariners down two men on. Talking about the Mariners being down a couple. This right here is the best opportunity for him. If there's a way for Jack to get on base, he ends up with a base hit. Nice play by Inge. But now you have Ichiro back to the top of the order. Ichiro's been swinging much better. As a base hit in the game, he's one for three. And you have Sean Biggins, you know, will make the pitcher work standing on deck. Start going to Ichiro. Don would like to see a couple of guys out there for Franklin Gutierrez, who's been the hot hitter for the Mariners. Each row against Ryan Perry, a second year man, finished sixth among American League rookies last year, 53 appearances. 0 1, a 379 ERA, 61 and two thirds innings, the 0 1. Talk a lot about the Mariners bullpen, the guys that they have that can rush it up there. Tigers, yeah, some guys out there. Perry, that last pitch, 97 miles an hour. Zumaya was throwing 100 last night. One, two to each row. In it first, the pitch means one and two. Intro one for two against Perry. Center fielder Jackson shallow, shading a little bit towards left. Free throw, one two outside. Looming large gives Detroit a two run lead, the 2 2 to each row. Working it count beautifully, three and two. Higgins on deck. Each row. Three two. He's aboard with a walk. Tying run at first. Lead run coming to the plate. And here comes Jim Leland. The Mariners answering quickly here in the eighth inning. Down two. Potential lead run coming to the plate. The person Sean Figgins. He had to hope that. The amount of time that Colomay was out on the field, maybe Perry, who come in and pitched a one batter, thrown one pitch, had to sit in the dugout for that amount of time. Jim Leland's conversation, short to the point. So like, hey, get this guy out. But pretty succinct. Don't miss out on the new FSN fan alerts. Just text FSN to 95323 to get updates on when you can watch your favorite teams. Stay informed. All the biggest events in Northwest sports and receive exclusive offers and giveaways. Text FSN to 95323 and sign up today. Here's Figgins. A walk, a strikeout, and a line out. Double play. Maxing off.
long look by Perry Figgins. Four hits on the homestand. He walked in the first, his sixth since the ball club came home. Bunt down to third, foul, one and one. Well, this is why you do all those bunts during BP. Got to get one down here. Watching Bromley, the third base coach, he's not putting on any signs, so I think they're leaving it up to Figgins what he wants to do. Engine, two steps, grass at third. Figgins shows bunt, lays it down. Pitcher's got it, told to go to first. He does. Figgins, sacrifice, well done. Sacrifice, one four base hit, will tie it. Does a nice job, even though it's back to the mounting deck. So Perry has to come in. No chance to get Wilson over at third. Perry's having their hottest hitter coming to the plate. Cutie double to left center's last time up. One for three today. 21 for 51 on the season. He's hitting a robust 412. Jackson shades him a couple of steps towards right. In center field. One out. Last ball, strike one. The end is one for two against Perry. Wow, look at that. Runners in scoring position. Whew. to Goody. Bill, fine job. One of one. Cardinals, look, they left 22 guys on yesterday. That's it? 20 innings? <laughs> that was ridiculous. Oh, that was zero, zero. Oh, yeah. Tigers have left 11 men on here today. One and one to Gutierrez. Tying runs aboard. One and two. A couple of really good pitches from Perry. Both of them on the outside corner. Cackrell talking about Goody. Love to watch him. Fun to watch. Watch him grow and mature. Here's the one, two. Strike three called. Could not believe it. Two down. After some fastballs away, they come inside with another fastball. And I'll leave it up to Jose Lopez. Runners in scoring position, two outs. Young Rick Perry, 23 years old, out of Pomona, California, lives in Tucson. Battling the Mariners RBI leader from last season. Big swing got fooled. Lopez, a 272 hitter last year, 25 home runs and 96 RBI. Over in 89 the year before. Good threat here for the Mariners. The 01. Foul. Looked like Perry got away with one. Hanging slider left it in the inner part of the plate. Just pulls it foul. Take the leads. Very set. The 0-2 to Lopez. Outside. A gap in left center field. 
Oh, and two strikes to Jose Lopez. Popped it up. Sounded like he broke his bat. Maglio Ordonez in charge there. Makes the play, and the Mariners can't push the two runs across. Strike out Cooney. Pop up Lopez. Inning over to the ninth we go, and Sean Kelly will take over on the mound. About his breakout 2009 season and find out where he hopes to grow in 2010. Plus, with the players spending so much time on the road, remembering hotel room numbers is often easier said than done. I'll say that and more at 6:30 on Mariners All Access. Sean Kelly, new pitcher for the Mariners, the fifth today. This is Miguel Cabrera, Car Carlos Guillen, and Brandon Inge. Stroke that deep center field slicing away from Goody way back way back can't get it and Cabrera will ease on the second as each row gets it back in they can hit a baseball hard and far coming up on Wednesday good pitching matchup Kevin Millwood against Felix Hernandez Felix coming off a win against the Tigers a couple of nights ago Kevin Millwood Often an opponent of the Mariners. 12 starts the last three years. Boy, that was some sizzling drive by Cabrera. Found back by Guillen, who's one for four today. Found out the Kochman fly to left, doubled to left, left center. And hit into a double play. Almost in the radio booth. Dave Neahouse with Riz. 0 oh 2. Ahead to the Mariners ninth, Griffey, Burns, and Kochman, five, six, and seven. Looks like it'll be Valverde coming out of the pen for the Tigers. He's still up. Oh, two strikes.
up. Carlos, his share of big moments with the Mariners. One and two. Kotsman stays with it. Kelly covers. Runner moves up. One out runner at third here in the ninth for Detroit. Brandon Inge is the header. Snell started, went five, and then an inning apiece for Teixeira, White, and Columbine. Sean Kelly. Louisville, Kentucky on the mound right now for the Mariners. Mariners will have to bring their infield up. They won't play quite as shallow as normal with Cabrera running at third. They can play back on the dirt a little bit. They will have time to make a play if there is a ground ball. Inch today, a walk, fly to center, strike out, and a walk. Two no to Inge. First action for Kelly. It's Monday. Two two. Nice slider. The home opener till his last appearance went an inning, gave up a hit, walked one for nothing. Oakland win, missed inside, full count. Walked him. One out, runners at the corners. Third time Inge's walk today. Ninth walk by Mariner pitching. There's no question they've had to pitch out of some trouble today. The Tigers, two for 17 with men in scoring position. Villa put it in play last time. He doubled to right. 3 1 pitch goes against Coleman back in the eighth. On the nose, figure short hop. There's one, two, and he's over. That's two outstanding plays on short hops by Sean Figgins this afternoon. To the bottom of the ninth inning, Griffey Burns Katzman. Sound like some runs? We'll see.
to stave off being swept tomorrow night. Seattle's going to kick off a three game set with Adam Jones and the Baltimore Orioles. Catch you right here with live coverage beginning at 6.30 on FSN and FSN HD. The Mariners going to get it done. They're going to have to get it done against a guy who's turned in some good years in the big leagues. Jose Valverde. 32 years old out of San Pedro de Macorís in the Dominican Republic. Lives in Santo Domingo. There are his numbers to this point. 6'4", 254. Free agent signee in January of this year. Here's a guy that led the National League in saves with 44 in 08. Led the National League in saves with 47 in 07. Back in 06, led the National League with 12.59 strikeouts per nine innings. This guy can deal. Comes in after a 25 season, uh, 25 save season last year at Houston. Four and two, a 2.33 ERA. In 08 with Houston, 44 saves, 47 with Arizona in 07. Knocked around in the minors for a while with Arizona in 03, 4, and 5, and really emerged as a big time save guy in 07. Ken Griffey Jr. will be his first hitter. Strike one to Jr. Junior tonight, base hit to right. Fly out to right and a strikeout. Mariners need runs. Did not go as they checked down to Greg Gibson. Four game winning streak on the line. Two and one. Ball, second baseman Sizemore to Cabrera for the first out. Bring up Eric Burns. Burns was not in the original starting lineup. Calf problem for Milton Bradley. Gave it a test. Decided to pass on today, so Burns he gets the start. His fourth start in left field this season. It's interesting to watch Valverde pitch to Junior. Three pitches, all of them off speed pitches to start, and the last one was a fastball, 95 miles an hour. But a lot of times you see closers come in, they usually go right after guys. One for three day for Eric Burns. Valverde made the All Star. Game at 07 did not pitch any game as Burns just gets out of the way. League championship in 07 with Arizona against Colorado. A lot suffered a, a loss in his only game there. Two and oh. Three and oh. Love to get Burns on. Dodgman's on deck. He's been the Mariner RBI guy today. Single in the second drove in a run. He homered in the fifth. And again, up by a couple of runs. Valverde, a 2 0 breaking ball. 84 miles an hour. Four pitch walk. Tying run to the plate, the person of Casey Katzman having a great day. Two for two, two RBI. 
and a walk. A home run is first in Safeco as a Mariner. And you have Milton Bradley coming out on deck. Bradley's on deck. He'll pinch hit for Adam Moore. came up big last night as well. Sitting on a fastball got a change up in the seventh and hit it deep to right went off the glove of Ryan Rayburn. An RBI double. Dodgeman 0 for 1 against Valverde. 2 and 0. Nap, the pitching coach, going out for a word. That's been a long ball threat. You got Milton Bradley. Long ball threat as well. Milton with two of the five home runs hit this season by the Mariners. Here's a look at that home run that he hit on the 1 1 pitch. One out in the fifth. Well, he knew it too. Went down and got it. Yep, fastball in the middle of the plate down. Most left handers like it there. Well, pretty sure he'll be zoned up in that area right now off of Valverde. He's ahead in the count 2 and 0. For pitch middle in. Gene Lamont on the left. Long time right hand assistant to Jim Leland. 2 and 0. 2 and 1. I don't think Casey liked it. He's got supporting evidence. Could be a big pitch, two and one. Off the end of the bat. It's the best fastball we've seen from Valverde, 97 miles an hour. Two balls, two strikes to Casey Catchman. Valverde, fourth pitcher tonight for uh, this afternoon for Detroit. 2-2. Two -two. Fought it off. Best home run year in the Bigs 12 two years ago with the Angels. It was two and two to Valverde. Slicing drive left field and there to make the catch is Don Kelly. Two outs. Here's Milton Bradley to pinch hit for Adam Moore. Milton on the season is five for 36. Two home runs, eight RBI. As a left handed hitter, he's three for 20. Two of those three hits are home runs. One at Oakland, one here against Oakland. Six of his eight RBI have come as a left hand hitter. Bradley can keep it going. Mike Sweeney's on deck to pinch hit for Jack Wilson. Runner goes. Big swing fouled off. Milton going up there aggressively. Like that. Now Verdi. Milton's three for seven against Val Verdi. Two have been home runs. Big. Cut 0 oh and 2. Mariners down to their last strike.
We see that a lot from veteran position players when they get a chance to hit coming off the bench. They will be aggressive. That's what you'd like to do. Hitting coaches will tell you that all the time. See if you can get a fastball and get a swing off right away. Struck him out on three pitches. Game over. Tigers win 4 2 and avert a sweep. Mariners four game win streak in the history books. The Mariners drop to six and seven. Tigers go to six and six. And the good news for the Mariners, they have won two series in a row. Keep that going with the Orioles coming into town. And then the pitching today, boy, they really had to work hard. Tigers had a lot of guys on base today. Mariners pitching did a pretty good job of it, but the offense just couldn't get it going. Cabrera, three-run homer, and a big eighth inning RBI by Austin Jackson. Knocked in the runs for Detroit as they make a winner out of Max Scherzer for Mike Blowers. I'm Dave Sims. Let's send it downstairs.